Assange can appeal uh, this decision. We assume that he will. How long could this drag out? Um, some time, maybe not so much time. Mm -hmm. It's been going on for years, but now we know that uh, it's going to be uh, a decision taken within roughly two months now from uh, the UK um, authorities. Mm -hmm. And um, the situation in UK is not exactly the same as in France. In France, it's a political decision to take a decree or not to mm -hmm. sign it. In the UK, it's slightly different. Uh, there's no um, decision to do it or not to do it. Um, the um, political authorities must sign the decree, except if they are a very limited a number of um, um, arguments that uh, can be uh, held by uh, the political authority not to extradite, and uh, there is apparently uh, no ground for this decree not to be signed. So uh, this is two months, and then Assange can appeal against that decree, but um, the appeal uh, is going to be examined quite swiftly by the High Court, and then... Um, eventually uh, extradition can take place. So after all this time, he could be back in the U.S. within a couple of months to face these charges? Yeah, a couple of months. Uh, the last uh, recourse for him will be, and maybe that will be his uh, uh, stronger shot now left, uh, is the European Court of Human Rights. Uh, he can apply to the European Court of Human Rights on uh, the grounds of Article 59, which enables the suspension of the decision to extradite pending uh, the full review of his application by the European Court, and we know that that can take years. But uh, it's very difficult to be granted this Article 39 application. Uh, he will have a shot on Article 3, which is uh, what he already argued on um, uh, partly successfully in first instance in, in London. So I'm sure that uh, his lawyers will be using that argument, the Article 3 on this Article 39 suspension application, and that will be his last chance. What, what are the merits of that argument? Do you think that it could actually work on his behalf? Um, Article 39 in extradition cases is very, very difficult to get. I've done it way number of times on Article 6, on problems of due process, fair trial. It doesn't work. The only cases are Article 3 having to do with violation of your uh, most important human rights, your health, mental, physical health, and we know that he has got arguments on that ground, and I think that that will be a serious, serious discussion um, to know whether Article 39 can be granted for him or not. But it sounds like you think the arguments on the other side on behalf of extraditing him are stronger. I can't say. I mean, the European Court is going to make this very difficult call, and I think it is going to be amongst the big decisions on Article 39 that we are going to get in from the European Court. It's, it's not possible to say beforehand what's going to happen, but, I mean, I think it can fall on one or the other side of the net. Let's say he is extradited in, the, in a matter of two months. He's back in the U.S. How serious are, the, are these charges he's facing? They're very serious. I mean, um, maybe they don't look as serious when you're on this side because there's a lot of political support um, and, and human rights support. But once you are in the USA, I reckon that things are going to be way more complicated for him. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much support he will get there from the American people, but uh, he is facing charges uh, having to do with national security, and we all know that that in the USA is a big problem. What's the penalty? I mean, could he spend life in prison? Yeah. He could. Okay. So that's a pretty serious penalty. It's a very serious um, <laughs> issue, and that is also what he is going to argue uh, about before the European Court, of course. Okay. We want to thank you, William uh, Julier, a criminal and human rights lawyer specializing in extradition law. Uh, thanks for helping us sort this out. Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. Bye.